Yo. Yeah. We back at it, man. What's going on, guys? Back at it with another freaking video. Another freaking video. Hey, <laughs> so um, I thought I wanted to do this video is because y'all know all the stuff going on regarding immigration, regarding the um, Title 42 and immigrants. So I don't know his first name, but the last name Hawley explodes on Biden officials. He said he's calling this a slavery because what they're doing is you didn't let the immigrants pass. You didn't shut down that. You didn't renew Title 42 because now you want to be able to get a lot more dem um, Latino votes. You're hoping that you're going to favor in the Latino community so that you got more votes from the Latino community. And what I'm you get what I'm saying? Because you know how some Latinos that are, you know, full-blooded citizens are like well you know i want my you know my family came over and i'm happy they're over here and they would probably support biden and then but you got some that are like man I'm, i guess i got several in our comment section that are latino american people yeah, latin both. america yeah that's latin supporting america, trump that that are fully for trump yeah not every latino person is for you skipping into the country free they're not they're not because everyone that i that I respond to or said something they said I didn't get it and my family didn't get it at ease why can't they just come in and do it like that so apparently I guess you know Biden is trying to Let's see I, think, I think that was a play a ploy Joy I think that I think that was a play Ooh. he did that he could have renewed that he did that because that's more people that are, he can get voting I can see it or their family or whoever hello everyone this is Outnumbered I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host Emily Campagno also joining us, Martha McCallum, anchor and executive editor of The Story, Dr. Nicole Sapphire, Fox News contributor and board certified radiologist, and Ben Ferguson, host of the Ben Ferguson podcast and co-host of The Verdict with Ted Cruz podcast. We begin with President Biden's attempt to win over Latino voters ahead of the 2024 election. Hmm. Instead of focusing on much bigger problems unfolding at the southern border, he has some other plans in mind. Texas Governor Abbott has dropped off his first busload of migrants in Los Angeles after it declared itself a sanctuary city. Abbott says small Texas border towns remain overrun and overwhelmed because President Biden refuses to secure the border. And Republican Senator Josh Hawley, he blasted Homeland Sec Sec Security Secretary excuse me, Alejandro Mayorkas about the disturbing reports of migrant children being exploited for cheap labor. That's horrible. It is. 250,000 migrant children unaccompanied crossing the border in the last two years and tens of thousands of them being sold into slavery. Let's not mince words. They've been sold into slavery. He's right. But back to Biden and those plans I mentioned. Instead of dealing with the southern border issue, which is serious and unprecedented, the White House, they're holding a movie night to lift up and celebrate Latinos. Yeah. Tonight, President Biden and the First Lady are hosting a special screening of Eva Longoria's Flamin' Hot film. That's the title of it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, come on, bro. Come Please. On, bro. How is he even still in the White House? He is doing Why this is for he still there? Vote. He still he wants the Latino vote. I mean, it's like nothing has happened. You show him movies and, and doing popcorn in the White House and you shouldn't even be up in now. No, but you you know, Martha, absolutely, we can celebrate Hispanic heritage and the great achievements um, as they're doing with that movie. Um, but Democrats have a really serious problem they need to look at. It's with Latino yes. voters. 538 summed it up this way, of course, a respected polling site. We took a look at the numbers and found that, yes, Biden's approval has dropped dramatically among black Americans since he took office in January of 2021. But the biggest decline wasn't among black Americans, it was among Hispanic Americans. He's seen support drop there by about 25%. So yeah. if I'm wow. Biden, man, I'm looking at this with seriousness. Well, that's the question. Is it with seriousness when the way to address it is this flaming hot promotion that they're exactly. doing for Eva Longoria's movie exactly. at the White House, which is about uh, a factory worker at, Dur at Ch um, Cheetos, excuse me, who came up with the spicy hot version. Um, I looked at the trailer, it looks like a cute movie, but you know, I'm also reminded of what Senator Hawley talked about, and that was another young woman who was- You remember we saw him before. Uh, remember he came to, we used to go to Word of Faith back home, and he came up there and he spoke, the guy who created that, who was a janitor. Oh yeah, that's right. So, that's but, right. okay. Wow, that was a while ago. That yeah, it was a long ago. time ago. 
profiled in the New York Times who worked at a Cheerios factory. Yes. And she was 15 years old. She's one of these young people who finds themselves, you know, barely a teenager, assigned to a life of slave-like factory work. Tens of thousands of young people. I have interviewed people who work with these children. This is a real issue. You never hear a peep about it from the Biden administration. So it's the real life things that Latino families go through and that they see people from their home countries going through that really address what is going on and what their concerns are. So, you know, if the first lady talks about, you know, what kind of taco are you and, and the, the president plays, you know, Despacito on his cell phone, these things are, um, I, I think they're seen as sort of lightweight uh, and, and not addressing the real issues. So I don't know. What kind of taco are you? I'm a burrito. What you mean? What kind of taco? He said that when he said that. If this is going to turn around a decade of deterioration of Latino support for for President Biden and Democrats, mm. Kaylee. I think that is spot on. And, you know, I've been saying um, for a while that Republicans, we need to come from a place of compassion on this issue. Yes, border security, so important. But lean in on the atrocities happening because of the lack of border policies. And Josh Hawley did just that. I think every Republican should watch what he said yesterday and think of this as a template for how to talk about these issues and lean into them ahead of the election. Let's listen to what he said. And it's on the issue of children and the way the Biden administration has treated illegal immigrant children. I tell you what I'm tired of. I've had Secretary Mayorkas sit in front of me at a different committee, the Homeland Security Committee, where I asked him at length about the outrage of 250,000 migrant children unaccompanied crossing the border in the last two years and tens of thousands of them being sold into slavery. Let's not mince words. They've been sold into slavery. When kids are being put into factories, forced to work overnight, forced to work in terrible conditions, they're not getting paid, they're not going to school, sometimes they're not getting fed. That's horrible. That's Oof, slavery. That's yeah, horrible. that is slavery. Powerful. Biden slavery, horrible. you could call it, of illegal That's immigrant horrible. children. That's right. And he also went on to make the point that the Biden administration refuses to accept responsibility and, in fact, keeps deflecting, right, from agency to agency. Oh, that's the Department of Health and Human Services. Oh, no, 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 that's not us. Oh, that's border security. Oh, no, 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 that's not us. Keep in mind that those are all portions of that same bloated federal government under President Biden's watch. So to have the American people expect that they would swallow that type of deflection. Well, no, they're out of this part of the pipeline. That's why we moved them. It's a shoving game on their part. And to your point, yes, the GOP needs to harness that messaging, which dovetails perfectly in with what you were saying, Martha. The contrast between this administration that plans to spend seven figures on different bilingual ads catering to those different Spanish-speaking voters. They elected the granddaughter of Cesar Chavez as part of the re-election campaign. It is window dressing. When you couple that with the horribly, uh, frankly, racist comments that have come out of the mouths of the president and his wife, it is no wonder that the Latino population, which is an American population, feels patently offended at what is clearly just propped up performative activism on the part of the administration. Because if they really cared about Latinos, which means Americans, then they would care about the 250,000 migrant children that are being yes. basically into slave labor. They would care about the missing and unaccounted for 65,000. And they would care about what mm. every American cares about, which is the value of the dollar, the kitchen table issues, yeah. safety and security, education, the value of the, the pension that has now plummeted, all of those things that face Americans. So them harnessing, they say they were going to focus on Latino populations in Arizona and uh, Pennsylvania and California. Well, they need to focus on the issues that would make all of the residents in all of those states feel secure and confident with this administration, which are the GOP issues. Yes. Well, Ben, let's watch that those comments from the first lady that prompted Latino journalists to say, we are not tacos. Watch. Tacos. Raul helped build this organization with the understanding that the diversity of this community, as distinct as the bogas of the Bronx, as beautiful as the blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio, <laughs> is your strength. It's dehumanizing. It's also exploitation on a political level. <laughs> Breakfast tacos. And I tacos. think what you're seeing from this administration is they're willing to exploit children. I mean, I see where she was going with it, but, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I can also see how one may be offended if, you know, one says that or don't appreciate that comparison.
you don't want to compare food against against a culture. It's just like uh, we love Quisha and we love how her dad cooks those ribs. And we love the greens that our grandmothers make. What? What? You don't reference food to a culture, to a, you know, well, don't do that. Well, it depends on how it's done because the cultures are known for certain foods and it can be, it doesn't have to be looked at derogatory. We love like, Little Chain Lou because <laughs> his mom makes that shrimp Ooh, fried rice it. so darn good. <laughs> You're wrong. But I'm just saying. But, <laughs> the, but the way she was trying to say it, I get where she was going. But, you know. That may have been a little bit out of context right there. We love Amber because Amber's family makes the best apple pie. Stop. Being sold into sex slavery, human trafficking, being sold off as slave labor, and they're doing it while saying, come to the White House and watch a cool video about Cheetos tonight, and we're going to tell you that we're on the side of Latinos. Right. I think he's got a bigger problem than people realize because the Latino community is very tight-knit in America. They're sick and tired of the drugs. Mm. They're sick and tired uh, of the gang violence. They're sick and tired of, of the dehumanization and being treated this way where, hey, we'll throw a night at the White House for you and watch a video, and we're on your team. These children are being abused, but they're being abused not just by the cartels. They're being abused by the Biden administration, and they're deliberately doing it on purpose. Yeah, they, they certainly are. And you mentioned some of the Democrats' plan to win over Latinos, as laid out by Axios. I reached out to the RNC this morning, and they pointed to their community centers, Nicole, which are in communities, Latino communities, diverse communities across the nation, and they laid out how points moved in their direction when they started getting on the ground and sharing the message of conservatism with Latinos. So you have that. You also have a president. Um, I'm curious if he's going to dance this election uh let's watch despacito here oh, with God. the president of the united no, states just say i had an image just have one thing to say hang on here <laughs> he like he will say darn i want an enchilada he needs to not even be right there right there oh i can't a taco all right no 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 we're not doing that we are not doing this. He's trying to show you how much he's supporting. We are not doing this today. There you go. If people don't see through this foolery, <laughs> if people so don't stupid. see through this, not, I mean, if, if they don't see what's really going on, if they can't see through this, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take for people to really wake up. Dance a little bit, Joe. Come on. I love the song. I will say that. Like my kids love that song too. But let me, first of all, <laughs> between the president and the first lady, they completely make a mockery of the entire Latin culture in some of these little things that they do. They get the laughs, sure, and they get some applause, but really it's an embarrassment. And, but yeah. the Biden campaign is very smart in the sense that they do have to focus on the Latin voters. At this point, they make up about 15% of voting Americans. Did she and say they are 15? the fastest growing racial and ethnic a group for the electorate and Biden lost 10 points from Hillary Clinton in 2016 to 2020 and now his approval has and I believe that the Latin vote is going to be the uh, the vote that's bigger than anybody's vote because their community is growing vastly and it's bigger so I think they're going to be the predominant voting group in the next 20 years so I wouldn't doubt it that's amazing. It's only 15%. I know there's a lot of factors why that's probably 15%. But watch that surpass the black vote. Watch. Watch. And I guess he's trying to go ahead and let me go ahead and cater. Let me get in because well, that's a group know of why, people. I don't even know why because he, child please, ain't nobody going to vote for him. You'd be surprised. I think this is going to be really interesting. See you know, I mean, the Trump support Trump supporters are going to come out vastly. But I'm curious to see how many people are going to run out there for Biden. I'm really curious to know what them numbers going to look like on November 5th. Or is that 5th or the 7th? I think it's 5th. I'm really curious to see. I'm going to be up that day watching that zoomed in because I'm really curious to see who's going to go out and try to go for, go for Biden. I don't understand why. I'm going to keep that thought I was about to say to myself. But, yeah, I don't understand why gone down since 2022 midterms from about 65 to I think 
34%. So he is in trouble. But when it comes to Latin voters, the economy still remains the number one issue. And yes, they had the child tax credits. They also had a lot of those COVID relief, relief checks that helped the Democrats um, in the 2022 midterms. But now every American, not just Latin Americans, are feeling the economy right now. And so it's going to take more than a Spanish speaking website, which had a whole <laughs> bunch of errors when it published. Yeah. Mm. It's going to take what are they going to do for the economy? And that's where they need to focus for Latin voters. Well, we know what they won't do because today they put out a statement about deferred action for childhood arrivals, DACA, the anniversary. Well, I seem to remember a former president, Trump, who offered temporary protection for DACA recipients in exchange for border wall funding, and they turned it down. <laughs> I believe Kamala was a senator. So maybe, Joe, go talk to Kamala today. <laughs> Still want to vote that way and vote for him because it's only three Democratic sense. people. It's only three. Right. It's, only like, three. What? it's only three. It's only three. Oh, my gosh. So with that, I was thinking, OK, she was naming off some of the things that he did that were positive for the country, the stimulus. And I got to go and do more homework as to some Keep of the going. things he did. But the, mm -hmm. the few things that she just named off. Yeah. Um, that just the corruption just overpowers all of that. It does. You know, all of the so-called good that you have done or the little bit of good or the things that you did that affected the economy and um, the U.S. in a positive way. It's overshadowed by the corruption and what is going on and what has been happening over the past couple of weeks. So that means that that's null and void to me. Great. I mean, wonderful. OK, yay. But, bro, you crooked. He is crooked. Like a question. And mark. he's been that way for a long time. Very long. He's been in, he been in political office been for ice skating along 40 years. like ain't nothing going wrong. Yeah, let me do this. Oh, let me get this. I got this account over here. Let me send my money there over this cousin. Let me send my money over to my son. Come on now. Cheetos. But it's like something is shifting, you know, over there in the, on the left side because you only got three people that's running. Three. Compared to how many people that's on the on right, it's a lot of on candidates. The right hand, like yes. 12 people. Yeah, it's a lot. All right. Why is it that the Democratic Party is only running three candidates and you know it's only going to be Joe? Please. They don't have it. So that's how you know. That's how you know, Joy. Look at the numbers. People are starting to be Listen, like, what? That's how you know they're trying to shut Trump down because they know if Trump runs against um, 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 Joe Biden, Trump is going to win it. Joe don't stand a chance. So they don't they didn't even have a whole gang of Democrats because the Democrats already know what it is. So Joe is trying his best to get him stopped because if Joe does not, if 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 Trump were to be stopped from running, then it then they know that the higher chance is going to go back to Joe. Well. They know it's going to be the higher chance going to go to Joe. Yeah. So, you know, not by my vote, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Of you know. all the things to do is throw a movie night. You got other issues that you that need to be dealt with and seen about. That ain't even important. <laughs> Biden, every time I look at Biden, he just, he's like, he needs to be in an elderly home. I just see a person needs to be in an elderly home. I, I see an elderly home, man. I just see... Fakeness. Come in, get you. Come like, in, get you. Get your medicine. I get my medicine. I get my medicine. Uh uh. I just don't. I don't like the fact that it's just so fake. Yeah. It's just so fake. That's yeah. that's what I can clearly see now. It's like if you spray the Windex. Yeah. Wipe the glass off so you can see clearly. Yeah. It's just all superficial. It's superficial. all in his face and everything, and it's like. Please. Yeah, that come little on fake somewhere. laugh. I don't know what this Mexicans are talking about on this song. Come on, I can't. I, I, I can't. That's how he look like. That's the law he's saying to me on and the. How own. people can still substantiate that and support that and get mad at other people because you don't fall into that foolery and those those lies and you still want to hold on to stuff that people ain't even own no more in 2023. Come on. I'm listen, and I don't, I don't like him playing on my Hispanic people. I love my Hispanic people. I don't want you playing on my Hispanic people, bro. Joe, what was that? that don't video? play on my Hispanic people, Joe. Forty-seven. Don't play on my hand Hispanic folks. Negative you know racist so. comments that he said. People have him saying the forty-seven comments of racist comments, something like that. I don't think I saw that. Yes, a couple of other YouTube channels that have brought that up. And I know we did some of them, but I know it wasn't forty-seven. We did a couple of no. the things that he said that were not in support of African-American people. Right. All right.
Like, comment, subscribe. Don't take a nosedive. But comment down in the section below if you want some more. We'll see you on the next, man. Love you guys. Bye.